My name is Brienne McGee. I'm a public affairs officer with the Coconino National Forest. And what you're looking at behind me here is evidence of a forest thinning project. Now, at first you'd wonder what forest thinning has to do with fire preparedness, but you got to understand the fire triangle. A fire needs three things to survive. It needs oxygen, it needs heat, and it needs fuel. Well, we don't really have much control over the oxygen, and especially with some of the lightning, we sometimes don't have much control over the heat portion of that fire triangle either. But what we do have control over is the amount of fuel. Without fuel, a fire can't burn. So what a forest thinning project does is it reduces that amount of fuel to lessen the severity of a fire should it happen in this area. So historically, in this area where we're standing, this would have been a meadow, a very healthy, pretty meadow. Um, settlers came through and in about the 1980s, they actually created this area. They made a plantation and they planted these trees. So these are a couple of decades old and as you can see, the trees are far too close together, quite unhealthy, not very large. So in a unplanned fire, these fuels on a very dry day could turn into ladder fuels building from the forest ground to these small trees here that are not healthy and overgrown and into the larger portions of the forest. So our crews today are reducing these ladder fuels and helping to create a more historically proper area. All right, so what are the next steps for this thinning project? Obviously, leaving the trees down like this isn't really helping much with the fire danger. They're still gonna lead to some sort of escalation of severity if an unplanned fire were to occur, sitting like this. So what's next is a dozer will come through, our crews will come through with a bulldozer, push these piles together, and then we'll do a prescribed burn uh, in this case, a prescribed pile burn, where we'll actually set fire to these piles and reduce them so that they're no longer a risk to fire severity. Um, pile burns here in northern Arizona tend to require a little bit extra moisture, so you'll often see pile burns happening in the winter when there's snow on the ground. That allows crews to put fire to these fuels. As you can see, they're larger branches and and and. and fairly large trunks and without the worry of the fire spreading across the forest floor or spotting very easily. The extra fuel moisture in the area around it, the extra precipitation in the trees and the vegetation itself helps to keep the rest of the forest safe while the piles consume.